Welcome everyone to this July 27th edition of What's Happening in Crypto with Cryptolark broadcasting to you from New Zealand and bringing you all of the latest from the crypto world and beyond thanks to the good folks over at CryptoNews.com. Today's top stories, Bitcoin ETF dramas continued, Iran and Venezuela looking to launch their own national cryptocurrencies and the altruistic king of crypto, Brock Pierce, gets a write-up in the Rolling Stone. Bitcoin, $7,917, taking a bit of a tumble on the recent news, down 3.42% in the last 24 hours, but still up 6.3% on the seven-day. Bitcoin dominance in terms of the crypto markets does continue. We can see here Bitcoin is all the way up to 46.91%. So that is the total amount of the market that is in Bitcoin, dwarfing any of the nearest competitors. Ethereum only is 16.15%. We just see that Bitcoin does continue to be the market leader and will be for quite some time, especially considering all of the hype around what is being developed for the Bitcoin ecosystem. The Winklevoss twins have had their Bitcoin ETF application rejected by the SEC again this will of course not stop the winklevoss twins from continuing to push forward and try and get that bitcoin etf launched they'll simply have to put in a third submission and a fourth submission and a fifth submission because the winklevoss twins are the kind of people that would take the rejection on the chin and say well this is just part of the process of actually getting this done and of course in terms of bitcoin etfs it's not like their application was the only bitcoin etf application in at the sec there are others and we have seen the direction one for example being delayed until september but this is going to happen it's not a question of if we're going to see bitcoin etfs the question is when are we going to see bitcoin etfs the chair of the CFTC comes out saying we need to test blockchain because we are four years behind. This is something I've mentioned a few times here on the program. And yes, we live in a world where the United States is the world's biggest economy. And that is something that we do have to reckon with. But the United States is not the epicenter of the world. Nevertheless, they are already looking and saying we're going to be left behind if we don't innovate here. And innovation now in the United States is not coming, or it's certainly not a concern that the United States isn't innovating in terms of coming up with great ideas. We see some of the top crypto projects being launched out of the US, but the regulatory innovation is lacking. We already have ETFs being traded over in Europe. We have Ethereum ETFs traded in the UK, for example. And we have so many countries that are looking to innovate in blockchain, looking to become blockchain centers of the future. If the United States does not speed up the process, it will get left behind. South Carolina ends its cease and desist order against crypto startups. Genesis Mining coming out basically straight away and saying, well, we can offer our cloud mining products if you should so desire to go out and get those cloud mining products is a different conversation altogether but that is a positive step to see them lightening up a little bit when it does come to cryptocurrencies iran preparing ground for national cryptocurrency to dodge u.s sanctions it's quite a salacious headline but nevertheless we will see national cryptocurrencies popping up more and more even with a national cryptocurrency, though, it still does require them to have a way to cash out that national cryptocurrency for something of value outside of Iran. Bitcoin may simply be a better option. Obviously, the Iranian national cryptocurrency will be controlled by the Iranian government. And that's not necessarily a positive for the people of Iran. Bitcoin may be the better option considering how popular Bitcoin has been in Iran. Seems to be the cryptocurrency of choice currently. 
Venezuela also pushing forward the idea of a national cryptocurrency, which of course is the Petro, but this is a bit of a slight uh, variation on that trend. They are going to have a Petro-backed national currency. And the Petro, of course, is linked to the price of oil. They're saying that they're going to come out and take away five zeros from the current currency, the Boulevard, which is floating around. This is a bit of an experiment in terms of where Venezuela is trying to go, and the Petro is kind of a half-baked idea anyway, because it requires the trust of the Venezuelan government to handle their finances properly, and we've seen that that hasn't really been the case for the Venezuelan government. Nevertheless, I think again, instead of having a government-controlled cryptocurrency, Bitcoin or Dash or Digibyte or any of a host of other cryptocurrencies may offer a better alternative for the people of Venezuela. Brock Pierce getting a big write-up in the Rolling Stone, the hippie king of cryptocurrency. Now, this really goes on to focus about his idea of trying to turn Puerto Rico into the new crypto capital of the world. And Puerto Rico does offer a lot of attractive incentives for crypto companies to actually go over there. I really like the focus on altruism where he wants to give away his fortune, essentially, to try and help to rebuild Puerto Rico and to build a better Puerto Rico moving forward. And I know that just mentioning Brock Pierce's name, someone's already down there in the comments section writing something like EOS Pedo coin. But when it comes down to it, someone trying to do something positive, that should be supported. And it seems like in this situation, Brock Pierce is trying to do something positive for Puerto Rico. And that is a welcome thing, I'm sure, by the people of Puerto Rico, without a doubt. Steve Bannon, who is interestingly connected to Brock Pierce, I feel like uh, sometimes in crypto, it's really that six degrees of Kevin Bacon kind of situation. But nevertheless, he is creating a cryptocurrency to boost global populism. I wasn't really aware that global populism needed to boost. I feel like populist politics are really going crazy at the moment. And he's going to be calling his cryptocurrency deplorables. What? That's ridiculous. Anyway, Power Ledger to provide peer-to-peer -peer renewable energy trading at Yokes Evermore Development at White Gum Valley. Now, this is a rather small story in terms of, you know, global impact. They're only creating a couple of dozen apartments that are going to be using Power Ledger's peer-to-peer -peer energy trading system. But every partnership counts, and these kind of pilot programs are really important as use cases you, when you can look and say, hey, look, it worked here and it worked in that little town over there and it worked for this company here. Then you start to really build a movement. NEM partners with Enspiral Dev Academy to further blockchain education in New Zealand. I feel like NEM has really been doing a lot of great things recently here in New Zealand, partnering up with Mana Labs. We have the Yellow Bird and their tracking of clothing on the blockchain. Lots of very interesting developments. And NEM, I think, has seen an opportunity here in New Zealand to come in and push those ideas forward and to help. This is the thing that's most interesting for me is to actually help people learn about blockchain technology, educate people about blockchain technology. And then once they've learned about blockchain technology on the other end, actually be able to fund those ideas. I did get a chance to sit down with Lon Wong, of course, the former president of the NEM Foundation, talking about his project Proxima X. I'll have that interview up for you guys in the next few days. It was a very interesting chat indeed. Verge, if you are a Verge holder and a Verge enthusiast, well, I have great news for you. You can now picture yourself in the ultimate form of luxury. Boatsters is now accepting Verge for their boat trips. Now, I wonder what kind of reaction the Verge community is gonna have to that. Boat. 
Final story of the day, exciting news from EOS as block producers vote to raise RAM supply to lower the cost of running dApps. Obviously, EOS is still in such an early phase in terms of its governance, but it, I think, is a very positive move for them to recognize that that could be a big problem for them and to actually vote to try and control that market a little bit. Thanks so much for watching today's episode. Let me know what you think about today's stories down below in the comment section. Join the conversation over on Twitter. Thumbs up the video and share these videos around the internet to help our community grow. Long live the blockchain and peace out till next time.